Hey, Adam. What's up? Uh, do you like scales? No. I'm not talking about the ones on the piano. I'm talking about the ones on a fish. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm Adam Menace. And I'm Peter Martin. And you're listening to the You'll Hear It Podcast. Daily jazz advice coming at you. Coming at you from beautiful open studio headquarters here in St. Louis, Missouri. Got our producer, Andrew Kitchen. Got PM. Got AM. Mm. I don't know why I'm laying it out so oh, detailed right now. You know now. what I'm saying? You got, you, you, you're giving them a lay of the land before we get started. Got coffee in my Star Wars mug. That's right. That's right. Good stuff, man. Um, so what are we talking about today? Well, so today we're, we're going to reference a blog post from uh, OpenStudioNetwork.com slash blog. Ooh. Again, I'm so detailed with everything. <laughs> no, uh, we thought we would kind of dig into the blog. We have so many great um, blog posts on here that we could uh, pull from, especially for nuts and bolts music thing. Right. Well, let's not overstate. We have several great blog posts. Several. We have so many posts, and several of them are wonderful, right? <laughs> several are meh. Uh, this Not one bad. was actually uh, written by you. Okay, um, this is one of the good ones. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> uh, about a year and a half ago, and uh, this is called The One Scale You Should Be Practicing Every Day. Um, right. And I'm so on board with this. Uh, I remember when I first, start, we first started talking about jazz, um, we would just do this in my living room four years before we started this. Yeah, podcast. everyone's like, "Man, the podcast is so natural and organic." I was like, "You know, we forget the mics there. We're just talking every day. We would yeah. just get together and talk for ten minutes." But no, uh, you would you were a, a big proponent of the chromatic scale. Yes, and making that part of your regular practice. Yeah, and uh, I've since taken up that uh, that practice, and it's really really great to, to keep in like regular rotation. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like kind of the default uh, and has been for a long time scale that I go to in terms of uh, practice um, if I only have time to practice one scale or even just starting out, you know. And I think, you know, I was just rereading the blog post and figuring out if I'd change any of my opinions on this. I kind of feel the same. But, you know, this is I'm I'm certainly we're coming at it from a pianist standpoint. Yeah. But I really think this is important um, for for all instruments, you know, from an improv standpoint, I can't speak too much technically about, obviously it's important for anyone to be able to technically play the scale and to master it. Each instrument has its, own, you know, sort of different reasons, I think, for that and different technical challenges that are surrounding the chromatic scale um, yeah. in terms of fingering and breathing and, what you know, whatever. But uh, in terms of improv, it's such an important part and, uh, and used so much with so many of the improvisers that we admire, so many of the great recordings in, in different places so it's just like anything if you're working on those building blocks once you get a chance to use it look the chromatic scale is very unmusical on its own just running up and down it yeah so it's just a means to an end but um when you've got that kind of um confidence i, I was gonna say mastery but i don't know if we ever get to mastery but confidence for sure in being able to execute different you know at different places on your instrument yeah. it really comes in handy yeah there's a few things for the chromatic scale uh, that are important uh i think for me uh, first just briefly touching on the piano side of it for pianists out there you know uh i practice it mostly now with just the first three three fingers mm. thumb first finger and third right. finger and the third finger really just being man i got you this beautiful midi keyboard oh i know right well, here you know what it was i thought that was more for you yeah no no that's for that's true okay i'll try it i'll try it okay let's see it's my first time playing it Yep, same oh, fingering. So much better. The same fingering. Is, yeah, same <laughs> thing. Uh, no, so that fingering for pianists, the, that sort of, those first three three um, fingers, that's a big muscle movement for us, right? Those yes. are all using big muscles, and it's yep. a great way to start your practice routine, just like uh, you would start a workout with more big muscles and then get more refined into the smaller muscles. Starting with those three fingers and really working that hand motion, you know, that that without not that kind of motion i did right. that which is not what you should do at all yeah, yeah yeah but starting with those big muscles really helps me to get warm and to feel strong and they've strengthened up by practicing that for sure yeah and we've got the fingerings i'm just looking on the blog post so you can see that there i think that that's the standard fingering i don't know that's kind of what i learned um for this scale i know there's different ways to approach it um but the idea being um you know, there's always these different things we're balancing strength, dexterity, but ultimately, um, you know, speed for sure. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, what what it's about is control, mm. you know, and I think the chromatic scale, in addition to the things we can use for improvisation for, as you say, kind of warming up um, is 
the ultimate control because you're playing every single note. That's you know? right. You're getting around. I mean, there's so many different ways to practice it. And what I what we kind of get into in the post is some creative ways to practice it because a lot, I do see a lot of people saying, oh, I know my chromatic scale, so I don't need to practice that. Yeah, I mean, but there's the pr thing is, is there's 12 chromatic scales. Really. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Absolutely. So but first, back to the, the piano fingering stuff. If you want to check that out, we'll, we'll set up a link here to the blog post so you can see it yourself uh, for the fingering that Peter does. But... Uh, back to the 12 chromatic scales. I mean, this is a concept that was taught to me earlier on that, you know, one of the most important things about it is if you think about it as 12 different chromatic scales, then you're going to, you know, kind of get those, those intervallic relationships together in your mind. You know, right. If you're starting on E flat, it's different than if you're starting on uh, G, you know, the second from E flat is different. The minor second, the minor sixth. Right. you know, you want to have those all at the ready that's super important absolutely yeah, so. and so the the fun thing about it is once you kind of get the fingering from a technical standpoint uh, on your instrument and can get around it then you know in going to the all 12 keys there's not that much of a challenge to get through them, so that's why a lot of people skip it but if you do uh take on that challenge and start to practice them in the different keys and think about it as you as you're talking about it you'll really start to glean some some good theoretical stuff that you can use in your improv. That's right. Because, you know, what, what it's really good at, at being used for in improv is, is, is as almost as a link yes. between things. You know, yep. it's, it's a great way if you're playing a fast phrase. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Peter, play a fast phrase. Well, yeah. Interesting yeah. sound we got going on here. It's well, kinda, you know, it's, it's better than the piano sound. Trust me. It kind of reminds me of uh, the uh, gig I did at the Ramada Inn Airport <laughs> in Kenner, Louisiana, in 1987. Good. That's what I the was wiki going wiki for. The wiki wiki room. That's what I was going for. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, yeah. So it's. <laughs> There's so many different parts, yeah. you know, uh, you it, you that, that we can use, and we think about it like, let's see. You know, triplets and stuff, but it's also starting phrases. Yeah. Um, it could be a, a bailout of a phrase. You know, like you oh, do a phrase and you, you're bailing on some chromaticism until yeah. you find your place. I'm hells, yeah. Not too proud to say that I've done that before. <laughs> Man, I've been, the chromatic scales bailed me out more times than a than a designated driver. <laughs> it's actually, a, it's a really important part of, of the bailout. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. It's the chromatic scale. Yeah, it's like a big mountain of hay for you to bail bail out oh okay Hello. and then there's you know like you said the chromatic enclosure thing being able to surround the note by the by the yeah. chromatic scale you know if you don't have it in your fingers in the first place those are very hard right so. and, and i mean the thing is i want everyone to think about this too is the chromatic scale is not just it's also you know broken minor thirds broken major thirds and we talk about that in the blog post you know different creative ways to practice the uh, chromatic scale so it's uh, you know you can break it up and you can think about it theoretically especially when you get into the minor all you know all those you know uh, d diminished patterns and stuff i mean look in anything fits <laughs> technically yeah it's a chromatic scale it's, yeah, it's a chromatic yeah. scale but all that stuff can actually work in a similar way when you're improvising so like if you're you know I would consider that a chromatic, more of a chromatic Definitely. pattern than an augmented pattern, you know, because it's like, because yeah. I'm phrasing out that top note, you know. Definitely. So I think a lot more of what we do, especially, you know, to your point of the connector and the link uh, is based around chromatic than we even realize. Yeah, yeah. Great. Well, uh, so again, if you want to see all of this information for yourself, you can go to uh, the blog post. We're going to uh, include that link in the description here, both in the podcast and in the video. Yeah. Uh, uh, the sound that we're hearing might not be what we actually broadcast because, you know, it's MIDI. We could change it. And just a, a, a recommendation from any listeners about some good uh, piano virtual instruments we should use. Yes. That maybe won't break the bank, but sound really good. Yeah. And are, are light on their feet for our podcast. That would be great. If yeah. anybody uses anything they like, let yeah, us know. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Where would they uh, put such a recommendation? You, you could put it in YouTube. I won't see it. Just put it in, like, search for it? or just, No, no, no. Write it in the comments. Type you YouTube slash recommendation. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, put it in the comments in the YouTube video for here uh, what virtual piano instruments you like, and we'll try to find a better sound than what we have uh, for our new MIDI, MIDI setup. Thank you, Andrew, for... Uh, for hooking us up here with the MIDI. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll figure out a way to, to use it more and, and be a little more uh, descriptive with our, our playing here as opposed to just describing 
<laughs> that that's the point of the MIDI keyboard. Uh, and then also you can go to you'll hear it.com. You can leave us a question. You can leave us a voicemail. Um, or rating and review. Rating and review. We haven't talked about that in 48 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get there, though, yes. I, one more thing about the blog. You know, we're going to do blog. one a week. One a week where we go through our open studio blog and find something interesting. Nuts and bolts music stuff. Ooh, uh, you, you threw it out there. Now, now we got to. Hey, is that to, too much? No, no, that's cool. But I mean, you put it out there. You just said once a week. Uh, listeners hold him to that. Well, I want our <laughs> listeners to maybe check out our blog and, and recommend us uh, some good topics we can cover here on the podcast that we can maybe expand on, expound on, expose. You know what would be fun would be, I love your blog post on the Barry Harris um the voicing warm up thing, Vo- voicing warm up from via uh, in, in homage to Barry Harris, right? That's we, a good one. We could do that. We could we could bust that one out. We could bust that one out. Yeah. Well, let us know uh, which blog post you want to hear more about, and we'll uh, we'll do it here on the on the podcast. Do we have any uh, new ratings and reviews? We did have one, oh. uh, or rather, a couple. The one kind of caught my eye because it had seven stars in the really yes, uh, the, and this is uh, it's kind of a funny thing. Jazz. The, this is the t- it's a five star review uh-huh. officially. Yeah, yeah. But then in the uh, the title of it is Jazz is not dead exclamation point seven stars exclamation point an awesome jazz music education resource with subject matter experts. That's you and me, sir. Really? Yeah, yeah, we are experts. I met Peter in New Orleans after seeing him play at Snug Harbor. Big shout out to Snug Harbor, Frenchman Street, Fabric Marini, uh, a true piano professional and innovative contemporary educator entertaining enjoyable and very informative no matter what level musician you are seven stars from audio bananas in the <laughs> usa <laughs> audio bananas is a great handle that's great, it's yeah, great. Yeah. so thank you for that yeah. and uh please keep the uh, reviews and you know it's it's just a great discovery platform we're, we're finding out as, as you found out at the gen conference yeah and definitely so, uh, and uh, we're still... We're, I don't even know what that means, discovery platform. It sounds like a cool little buzzy word, right? Yeah, I just agreed straight up without <laughs> even thinking about it. Uh, one thing we're doing also is our new theme song yes. con- contest. Send us your, your closing credits theme song for the You'll Hear It podcast, and we yeah. might put it on the podcast. You can send that to Andrew at You'll Hear... Wait. <laughs> Andrew, Andrew at, at OpenStudioNetwork.com. Andrew at OpenStudioNetwork.com. Send us your track, and we may use it as our closing credits. Yeah, and what week. we're thinking about doing is doing it for the whole week, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, if we get enough of them, I'm hoping we flood Andrew with emails. That's what I want. That's, that's, that's right. why I used his personal email. That's right. Oh, that's your personal email. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that's our weekly listener theme song challenge. Um, very excited to hear what comes up with that. And then... Um, I guess till tomorrow, you'll hear it. <laughs>